What this tells us is that the McDonald's brand itself is so powerful that the McDonald's logo has become a nudge all in itself. You could call it the McDonald's effect. Hello, and welcome to my new series, Behavioral Breakdown. In this series, I'll be using my expertise in behavioral science to uncover how some of the biggest brands in the world are using some clever psychology to influence your decisions. When I go to these places, I'll be looking for as many behavioral science principles as possible. Brands will earn one point for every principle that I find, and they can earn bonus points if I think that they've executed on that principle in a very clever way. So with that explanation out of the way, let's jump into the subject of today's video, McDonald's. First things first, let's talk about McDonald's iconic color scheme, red and yellow. You might have heard that red and yellow makes you more hungry. When I searched for it online, I found dozens of articles claiming that to be the case. But when I actually clicked on those articles and read into them, I found that all of these articles were mainly referencing each other, and none of them really had any credible, scientific, robust evidence that looked into this exact topic. In fact, I only found a couple of really small studies that looked at this question directly, and what they found was actually the opposite, that red made you less hungry, and to me, that would make more sense from an evolutionary point of view. In evolutionary psychology, there's this concept called opposmatism. This is the idea that over time, toxic, poisonous creatures have evolved to have very bright colors to signal to predators that they're not good to eat. This means that over time, predators have learned that bright red and bright yellow are toxic colors. They signal poison. So to me, it actually makes more sense for our brains to have developed the opposite association that red and yellow are actually unappetizing. But of course, none of us actually associate McDonald's with poison. Well, some of us might, it depends on your experience, but most of us don't. So what's really going on here? Well, I think that all of these pop psychology articles might actually have the causality the wrong way around. Rather than McDonald's branding themselves as red and yellow because that's what makes us hungry, instead, I think we feel hungry when we see red and yellow because that's McDonald's' colors. You see, our brains work by making associations between colors and objects and things that we interact with and then what the result of interacting with those things actually is. So by repeatedly getting food from McDonald's and all of their similarly colored competitors, we actually start to associate those colors of red and yellow with food and therefore it makes us hungry. The causality is the other way around. But what are McDonald's actually doing in store in order to shift our behavior? Well, the first thing that they do is play on our novelty bias, which is the human brain's tendency to pay attention to things that are new in our environment. Again, this was something that was really beneficial for us trying to survive in the wild. New things in our environment are the things that are most likely to be causing us any harm or danger in the immediate term. However, these days we don't tend to have predators coming out to eat us, but what we do have are McDonald's posters that change because they're on digital screens now. By changing their in-store displays from static posters to digital screens, it means that McDonald's can constantly bombard us with novelty, new images which direct our attention and make us pay attention towards their communications. But once you're inside the McDonald's, the most interesting part to me as a behavioral scientist are these menu selection screens. Because you better believe that these menu selection screens have been carefully engineered by someone like me in order to make McDonald's as much money as possible. The main thing that I noticed was that McDonald's tended to place its highest margin, highest cost items in the top left of the screen. This is likely because they understand that whatever people read first is what is likely to be chosen most often. Because here in the UK, where the primary language is English, we tend to read from left to right and top to bottom, which means that whatever's in the top left is going to be what's read first. So therefore, it makes the most sense for McDonald's to place its highest margin items in the top left of the screen, so then they can shift people's behavior to choose that item more often, and therefore make McDonald's more money. It would be really interesting to see if this is different in countries where people tend to read from right to left, for example, in Arabic speaking countries or Urdu speaking countries. So if you're from a country that speaks Arabic or Urdu as the main language, then let me know in the comments below if this McDonald's menu experience is different for you. And kind of like the reverse to this effect, it's interesting to see what items are placed lower down on the menu. You see, because we kind of implicitly understand that whatever's at the top is going to be the most popular, that creates a sort of implicit social norm, a default or a status quo that indicates to people what the normal behavior is when you're in a McDonald's. What I noticed on the McDonald's menu, and you would expect this, is that the vegetarian and vegan options are placed lower down on the menu. By placing them lower down, they're indicating that the meat options are, well, the default, the status quo, the implicit social norm that most people are going to be going for, and that if you choose the vegetarian or vegan menu, then, well, you're a bit weird. Now, as a caveat, I'm not a vegetarian or a vegan, but imagine if this choice architecture was reversed. Imagine if all the vegetarian options were at the top of the menu, and if you wanted to choose a meat-based product like chicken nuggets or a hamburger, you had to select a separate 
tab that said meat. How does that change people's decision making? Now suddenly choosing meat feels like the weird option, whereas going for the vegetarian options seems like the status quo or the default. Now you can imagine that that would shift a lot of people's behavior over to choosing vegetarian options, and on the scale of McDonald's, imagine how much less meat would be consumed at a global scale, and what impact that might have on the planet. Just some food for thought. They also use some low-hanging fruit, like scarcity bias, saying that some items are only available for a limited time. We know that people value things that are in limited supply more than things that are abundant and available all the time. But the next thing I wanna talk about in what I think is perhaps the most well-engineered part of this entire experience is this screen right here, where they prompt you to donate to their Ronald McDonald charity. This screen right here is an absolute masterclass on how behavioral science can be applied in businesses and brands. And let me break down all the different things that are going on on, on this very simple looking screen. The first reason why this screen is brilliant is that it's very well timed. It's at the end of your checkout when your credit card is already out or your phone is already out, ready to pay at the contactless till, and that's when they prompt you. And we know from behavioral science that a well timed message can often be more impactful in changing people's behavior than what the message actually is itself. Another thing that makes this nudge very powerful is the fact that it's an active choice, not a passive one. Previously, before these screens were implemented at McDonald's, they would get people to donate to charity by having a pot on the table near the checkout. Now these little pots for your coins are a very passive way of asking people to donate to charity. Whereas on these checkout screens, it is literally stopping you from checking out until you make a decision on whether you want to donate or not. By prompting people with an active choice, it completely changes the emotional response to the request. When it's a passive choice, you can easily ignore it and not feel too guilty. But when they're actively asking you to donate to charity and you have to manually select I do not want to donate to charity, that makes you feel, to use a British term, like a bit of a knob. And I'd reckon that those two factors alone make a huge difference to how frequently people donate. But on top of that, the content of this message is also extremely well crafted. The first thing to note is that the default status quo amount of money to donate is a roundup to the nearest pound. This plays on people's psychology and the fact that we just love round numbers. They're very satisfying for our brains to deal with because they're so easy to process. As a result of that, by making the donation a roundup, people are much more likely to have positive feelings towards that donation and therefore more likely to follow through with it. It's kind of like when people fill up petrol in their car. Unless you're filling the tank to full, people tend to stop their petrol at a round number. Stopping filling your car at exactly 30 pounds just somehow feels so much better than stopping your car at 27.85, even though it's more money. And McDonald's is using that same round number bias in order to boost donations to their charity. They also, again, are using some low hanging fruit by making this bar yellow, making it stand out, making it salient to the user, and therefore indicating that it's the status quo. And that is further emphasized by, the, again, the fact that it's at the top of the page, leading to that serial position effect that I mentioned earlier. It's the first thing that you read, and therefore it's the one most likely to be chosen. But then, if you don't go with that default amount of money chosen, they give you an option of three different amounts to choose. Now, this is also very clever. Firstly, displaying things in groups of three is very satisfying for our psychology. We call it the rule of three. And I bet you that these three options that they display on the screen have also been rigorously tested as to how they can boost the most donations for the charity. What's most important to understand when displaying three ascending quantities of something is that the most common option that people will choose is whatever is in the middle. This tendency to choose the middle, what behavioral scientists call the middle option bias, is consistent across whether we're talking about popcorn, wine glasses, or indeed donations to charity. The middle option is the one most likely to be chosen. Now, I don't have the data, but I would guess that other than the salient roundup option at the very top, I would think the second most popular donation amount would be the middle of these three options displayed below. Okay, enough about the menu. Let's talk about the waiting. No, not that waiting. I'm talking about this waiting. This is the time between when you order your food and when you actually receive it. And for me, this is the worst part of the entire McDonald's experience. You're hungry, so you're already irritable. But then the environment that you find yourself in is noisy, you're standing around awkwardly because you don't know where you're supposed to be standing, and the staff are clearly getting annoyed because they literally have to yell the number of the order that they have ready because people aren't paying attention to the numbers that are showing up on the screen. If I had McDonald's as a client, I would help overcome this problem by asking people to simply put in their name or initials when they make their order. Then I would install an automated announcing machine that would announce the number along with the name of the person whose order it was to take advantage of something in psychology that we call the cocktail party effect. The cocktail party effect says that people will rapidly shift their attention if they hear their name being spoken. It's called the cocktail party effect because imagine you're at a cocktail party, everyone's chit-chatting, there's lots of noise in the room, but then you hear somebody say your name. Why is our brain so good at honing in when somebody mentions our name and why does it divert our attention so much? 
We don't know for sure, but for some reason people tend to pay a lot of attention when they hear their name spoken. And so if McDonald's can take advantage of this, help their staff not having to yell at customers every single day, and also make the experience of waiting a lot more pleasant. And finally, let's get on to the food itself. McDonald's and fast food in general is very appealing to our brains because of how it's evolved to perceive taste. When humans were struggling for survival in the wild, the nutrients that were in short supply were fat, sugar, and salt. And as a result of that, our brains have learned to over-index how much pleasure we get from those substances being in our food. However, in modern society, those nutrients are no longer in short supply, but our brains still work the same way. And that's the reason why these chicken nuggets dipped in sugary barbecue sauce taste so good to me. Our brains are literally evolved to enjoy chicken nuggets. What's more is that after consuming McDonald's food a few times and consuming their marketing as well, our brains start to associate delicious food with the brand itself. This relates to that red and yellow thing I talked about at the start of this video, but it also relates to a really interesting study done on children aged between three and five years old. What this study found was that children consistently rated food as being tastier if it was wrapped in McDonald's packaging rather than plain packaging. And what's crazy was that this effect was consistent whether the food was chicken nuggets or even baby carrots. What this tells us is that the McDonald's brand itself is so powerful that the McDonald's logo has become a nudge all in itself. You could call it the McDonald's effect. Wow, that's a lot of behavioral principles right there. Let's tally them all up and see what score McDonald's got. I actually have no idea what score McDonald's got until I edit this video, but wow, what a number. All right guys, thanks for watching today's video. If you enjoyed it, can you please give me a thumbs up down below and let me know in the comments, what brand do you want me to break down next on Behavioral Breakdown? Can't wait to see you in the next one. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.